Hi, good morning everyone. Can you all see my screen and can you all hear my voice? If you all can, uh, please let me know in the chat below so that I know that you all can hear me and see my screen. All right. Hi, please let me know if you all can hear me and see my screen. I can't hear you, man. The questions, anyone say anything? You can't even no, see the question. No. Hi, can you all hear my voice and can you all see the screen? Hey guys, can you hear me? Same as the but we uh usually should uh webcam if on yeah as in but not started yeah I think it started already. But no one replying. Can be the United people then no Um I can't we can't see the questions. We can only see the chat area. Yeah, we can only see the chat area. But I cannot see the question. Then they request pair then.
Hello. Let's do the hello. On air already started. Hello guys. Uh, can you hear me? And can you all see my screen? If you all can, uh, please let me know inside the comment section below. Afternoon, guys. Uh, can you all see my screen and can you all hear my voice? If you all can, uh, please let me know inside the comment section below. All right. So I don't think I can see the question still. Okay, okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry so much. Uh, apologize so much for all the, uh, for all the bad um, prep. Um, it was something to do with the presenter view. But so sorry. So let me uh get on with the webinar again. So once again, good afternoon to every one of you. Hopefully, you all can uh hear my voice and see my screen. Once again, apologies for uh, all the things and sorry for dragging on for ten more minutes. Uh, it must have been a long wait. Right. So, uh, firstly, uh, I know I'm not Isaac, so um, uh, I am not as qualified as Isaac, obviously, without the CFT and CFT, uh, CFTE qualifications. However, uh, I assure you that I understand and I, uh, I assure you that I will uh, give you all the best insights to the best of my ability and that um, whatever I give will be uh, something that I have properly prepared. Right, and I will not uh, actually anyhow uh, give your comments and whatsoever. Right, so I know that I'm not Isaac, and I'm just covering him for one session. Do not worry if you all hate me, um, it's fine as well because he'll be coming back next session. Right, he'll be coming back next session. I'll be just covering this live trading session today. So just a brief introduction. My name is Hao Cheng, and I work in uh, Everest Fortune Group as well. All right. So uh, before we start, uh, this is uh, our usual investment warning disclaimer. All right. So information contained in this material is intended for general advice. Uh, it does not take into account your investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs. FP markets have made every effort to ensure the accuracy of the information as the date of publication. FP market does not give any warranty or representation as to the accuracy, reliability, or completeness of the information contained in this material. All right. So without further ado, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get to it. So basically, these uh, three things for today. First thing, I will go through the market sentiment because I believe that we we should always trade according to the market sentiment. All right. If uh, if the market sentiment is let's say risk on, I will definitely not uh, go for something uh, like shorting the uh, US dollar, right? And then I will go through the trade setups of the day. And then after that, we'll, uh, uh, I will give you a chance to request for technical analysis on all the specific currencies. So Irene Jenkins uh, say that uh, you cannot, they cannot hear me and I have to log out. Uh, can others hear me? And can everyone hear my screen so that I can confirm once again? Okay, okay, Ken. So um, probably you have to try again all right Ken so let's move on with our presentation all right so uh, for people who always attend our webinar uh, this is the way that we determine our risk sentiment right we have the risk on sentiment and we have the risk off sentiment so what's the risk on sentiment the risk on sentiment is basically when the market is positive when the economy is in confidence right people are confident of the economy when they're confident of the economy then they will go for higher risk assets why because uh, they are more confident right so uh, going for the more risky assets uh, gives them higher reward right so it's always risk versus reward right it's corresponding right so when it's a risk of sentiment however if it's in a risk of sentiment people are more risk adverse people are more scared of the market why because maybe the market is more volatile maybe there is a bad news right for example uh, uh let's say the nfp the nfp which is releasing tomorrow uh, in other words is uh, didn't do well right people are not employed this is a bad news right because 
when people are not employed is obviously a bad thing for the economy right so when there's bad news for the economy uh, it tends to be a risk of sentiment and when there's a risk of sentiment people tend to be risk adverse and then they will go for safer assets things like the bond right and for risk on uh, the opposite people will go for more uh, more risky assets for example stocks for example forex right so here we have uh, below the risk on currencies and the risk of currencies so for risk on currencies we have the aussie the kiwi the cat the euro and the pound and a uh, risk of currency we have the dollar the yen and the franc and then we have the last four factors is how we judge whether it is risk on or risk off so we have the dxy the us Daniel treasury yield the spx and the vix all right, so uh, very fast, I will just uh, fast, uh, fast uh, overview of all the four factors for today, right? Uh, because this is not a fundamental section a se session, I want to uh, mainly base it on a lot of uh, technicals, right? I want to show you some of the setups, right? So I'll go through this very quickly. All right, so first we have the DXY, right? So uh, people uh, all know the DXY is our dollar index. So um, recently, what caused the dollar index to fluctuate a lot and what caused the dollar index to continue rising is uh, because Janet Yellen, uh, which is the Secretary of State, mentioned about uh, having high interest rate, right? So she put it in a way that is not very good, which is what caused the stock market to fall. However, what she meant was actually because of the continuous money pump into the economy, there's too much money in the co uh, there's too much money in the economy, and because of that, um, the Fed right the fed might want to increase inflation by a bit to con uh, uh, might, con uh, might want to control inflation right by uh, increasing interest rate however uh, she's not saying that the fed will uh, confirm uh, increase the interest rate but however this is one of the steps they might take to control hyperinflation right why will happen because there's too much money pumped into into the economy and then when there's too much money uh, pumped into the economy then things get to uh, tend to get more pricey right which causes inflation right and one way to do so is by raising interest rate right when they when interest rate is increased then uh, people will have less spending power and when people have less spending power it will control the rate of inflation which is something the federal government need to do sooner or later because there's more uh, more or less about six trillion dollar inside the economy right so there's a lot of u.s dollar inside the economy so uh, in, uh raising interest rate is one of the way to do so right so this is what janet yellen is trying to say however uh, it has already led to an uh, increase of the dollar as well as a uh, decrease in the stock market right uh, for the past two days if I'm not wrong she said it on Wednesday or was it Thursday and then uh, you could see a sharp dip in the uh, Nasdaq as well as the Dow Jones all right uh, next we have our US 10 year treasury yield so uh, the US 10 year treasury yield is directly inverse to our uh, bond market right so when the, uh, we can see a decrease in the uh, 10 year treasury yield in February it was about 1.7 percent it spiked to uh, two year highs right however in uh, this this month it uh, went down to about 1.5 percent right so it decreased showing that it's an increase in bond buying when there's an increase in bond buying, it shows uh, people are trying to uh, buy into bonds. Why? It is also linked to the interest rate, right? When a government is paying a high interest rate, means they are giving up high debts, right? Which is why people are interested in buying bonds, right? So many people buy into bonds, which is why it's causing the treasury yield to decrease. All right. Lastly, we have the S&P. Uh, this S&P, actually, I just took it from yesterday. And uh, yesterday, it increased by about 0.3%, which is uh, increased by a little bit, right? And then uh, we can see a uh, uh, fall in the VIX, which shows a uh, over risk on sentiment, right? You can see from the dollar index, from the 10-year treasury yield, from the uh, S&P, you can see overall, overall, it is a slightly risk on environment. All right. So, um, this is the risk sentiment for today. I do not want to cover too much on our risk sentiment. So uh, this is actually the end of our slides, right? So let's move on without further ado to our charts of the day that I, I want to show you all, all right? So let me drag out my chart. So um, for now, I will just cover some of the charts first. So um, just bear with me. I know that you all have some of the questions that you all want to ask as well. So um, you, you all can maybe hold the questions to the end of uh, the uh, end of what I want to show you all. Then um, you all can start requesting. All right. So the first one of the first chart I want to show you is actually on dollar yen. All right. So uh, speaking about dollar yen, actually, I'm um, very uh, 
I, I'm very bullish on the dollar, right? So technically on the uh, dollar yen, I'm also bullish as well. All right. So uh, we take it to the weekly time frame. All right. So in the weekly time frame, you can see, let me just adjust it. In the weekly time frame, you can see that dollar yen used to be in a downtrend, right? So if I were to draw a downtrend line, I can draw a downtrend line right here. And you can see that prices has already broken off the downtrend line. We tested the downtrend line before pushing up further, right? So now I can actually draw an uptrend line as well. So let me just draw these two lines and you can see that there is a cross between the two. All right. So um, you can see that uh, the retest area was was where it bounced. All right. So now let's move on. So definitely in the long term, dollar yen is bullish. All right. It has come out. It has broken out of the downtrend. All right. And in the day, in the day, we see another uptrend, right? Uh, you see that I do not really need to adjust the uh, lines because uh, this is a very nice uh, trend line according to the graph action already, right? So if I want to be, if I want to be really ambitious, uh, I can even say that uh, if I were to draw a Fibonacci, right? So if I take a retracement from low to high, and if I open up the 61.8% level, you can see that uh, it reacted off the 61.8% level and bounced up, right? So I can, if I want to be uh, ambitious, I can say that uh, there is room to grow all the way until our negative 27, which is about 112, right? So this is being very optimistic and this is uh, being uh, very, very uh, uh, long, long term looking, right? So long term looking, definitely bullish. But however, uh, I will not be covering at this level today, but I'll just leave it there for reference sake because um uh, now the level here is on daily and it's too far away from our price level right so i will put it as uh, just as our um second resistance all right so uh, let me dive deeper into our four hour time frame all right so in our four hour time frame um you can see that actually um the four hour time frame this candle just closed right and this candle is our uh, last four hour candle which closed at 5 p.m right so it's just closed and you can see it was a bearish candle so uh if i were to draw an uptrend line here right i can draw an uptrend line here so you can ask me why why did i draw it uh like this and not uh whether it is broken right you can also draw it like that saying that uh the uptrend line has been broken but however uh two reasons firstly i believe that the dollar is very uh the dollar is bullish as well as uh if you can see here there was a previous squeeze so if i were to draw a downtrend line and a, a downtrend line here and I were to draw an uh, uptrend line here, you can see that uh, there was a breakout of the squeeze. And actually this uh, X, right, is actually where I want to find my long position. All right, so I'll just take all this away because it's uh, very distracting. All right, so uh, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at all the FIPS more clearly. All right, so first thing I can do, I can take a Fibonacci uh, extension, right? So for extension, I can open up a uh, I can take the last move, right? So one point, two point, and three point. And you can see the 100% is directly at our extension. All right, and then we can take the last move of a retracement. So if I take a retracement, if I open up the retracement, and I take from here to here, and I open up the 61.8% level, you can see that um, it is all at around this area, right? Which is uh, where we want to long, right? So. I will uh, put this area, which is our swing low, as our entry target, which is uh, where our prices is at right now, right? So it's quite near. So this can be my first support. All right. Then next, uh, I can find uh, a few profit taking targets, right? So the first profit taking target I can take is actually um, I can take an uh, entire move, right? I can take an entire move from up uh, from up to down. All right. So if I were to take an entire move. Sorry, let me just take away that. If I if I take an entire move from up to down, and uh, you can see that the 61.8% level is just nice as at our uh, horizontal swing high resistance right here. So this can be a potential level as well. And then if I were to take uh, if I were to take a, a Fibonacci extension, right? If I were to take a Fibonacci extension one, two, and three, and if I open up the 161.8% level. Uh, you can see that the 161.8% level forms a very nice resistance area. So I can actually mark that out. And this can be my resistance area. All right. Uh, let me just take.
This can be my first resistance. All right. So this can be my uh, first take profit target. However, this is obviously uh, very little, right, to take profit. So I can go for a second take profit target and uh, I can take a second retracement and I can actually open up the 78.6% level. And you can see that the 78.6 level is actually at this uh, pullback resistance right here. So this can be our next pullback resistance. So this can be our second target, second price target. Right, so uh, my my bias is definitely bullish for dollar yen, uh, especially because there's so many uh, good dollar news right now. So my uh, my target is definitely uh, first resistance is at about one zero nine point six nine, and then second resistance will be at one one zero point nine four. All right, so this will be my bias. And if I were to open up an indicator, maybe I can use a moving average, right, to show you all. So if a uh, moving average now is cutting through the graph too ugly, so I will open up the 34-day uh, moving average, all right? So if I take a 34-day moving average, you can see that um, uh, this moving average uh, uh, and the price is going very nicely, right? So if I were to draw a downtrend line, you can see actually the uh, the downtrend line and the moving average mimics the graph very well and it doesn't cut the graph too many times so I think it's a very nice uh, moving average right here so uh, in the short term definitely bullish in the long term bullish as well which is why uh, I'm I think uh, the dollar yen has a uh, room for uh, room for growth right and then if you can be even more uh, ambitious right you can always set your uh, final take profit target at uh, this swing high right here because if you remember what i said was that uh, this is the final take profit target from the entire move on the daily right you can think of the daily this entire move swing down react at the 61.8 percent before pushing up further all right so this is my take on the dollar yen all right so very very bullish on dollar yen okay so next uh next graph i want to show you all is actually the pound aussie all right so let me just toggle it out So um, this is the graph on pound Aussie, all right. So uh, if we look on the monthly time frame, a uh, monthly time frame actually um, quite bullish already. I can draw this trend line right here. So uh, this is actually showing that uh, it's quite bullish, right? However, you can also say it's bearish because it has fallen from here and then you can draw a counter line. But then even if I draw a counter trend line, you can see that actually the counter trend line might be really broken. But of course, this is a bad trend line. And of course, this is not very accurate because this is on the monthly. But sh just showing you all that generally, uh, uh, the, uh, the direction of uh, Pound Aussie is mostly on the bullish side, all right? So if I were to move on to the weekly time frame. Uh, the weekly time frame shows, uh, let me just change my provider to forex.com. All right, so uh, if I were to look on the, uh, if I were to look on the weekly time frame uh, bullish as well, so you can see this uh, higher lows, higher highs, and, and now make a higher low, uh, aiming for a higher high, right? So this is the uh, price structure right here. So if I were to actually draw in close, uh, you can see that it is on an uptrend as well, all right? So uh, if I change it, then you will cut too many candles. So I, let me adjust it. So this will be my uptrend line for uh, the weekly time frame. So uh, let's go down to the daily time frame. Okay, if I uh, were to see on the daily time frame, actually, uh, I can draw another counter trend line right here. So if I were to draw a counter trend line down, you can see that uh, prices have already broke through and then it's waiting to retest, right? Versus my uh, uh, upper... Uh, my my ascending trend line you can see that this is uh my entry right this is uh, this is where i want to enter all right on the daily time frame on the daily time frame however the daily time frame is not that accurate so we can move on to a lower time frame but let's mark out this area first by a horizontal ray so we can take out all these lines before moving out to our lower time frame chart to see the price structure clearer right so we move on to our a lower time frame and you can see our, our line here so uh, firstly i can draw the downtrend line again this time i can draw it nicer so if i were to draw my downtrend line right so you can see it touched 1.2.3 points so uh this is our downtrend line and he has broke through the downtrend line waiting to retest our downtrend line next uh, I can draw my uptrend line right in this case this is a tentative trend line because because it only touched two points so uh, it's okay because I believe that the third point will be here and uh, looking at the bully, uh, look, looking at the weekly time frame and the uh, monthly time frame 
it is probably still bullish all right so still very bullish on the pound aussie okay so first thing first uh, for my uh for my entrance same thing i can find fibonacci retracements to uh enhance this level even stronger so if i take a retracement and you can see the 78.6 percent level is directly below our entry uh, entry right so we all need to be above and i want it to be at the cross so the 78.6 percent level is quite near all right next we can take a fibonacci extension so if i take an extension i will take three points one point two point three point right and i think i will open up the 78.6 percent as well all right and you can see it forms a nice confluence area so let me just highlight this area out and this will be my bearish area sorry my bullish area and this can be my bullish area as well so this is for my entry next i can find another take profit target so for take profit target actually uh, i can put it further i can put it uh, rather uh, above all these highs right so i can put it at this horizontal swing high resistance right here i want to uh, I, I believe that it will break through all these highs right so you can see the price structure here if i were to draw the price structure out uh, it swings uh, why is it in white let me just change it to black all right so you can see price swing high swing low a swing high come down low again but this time higher low right and then now it makes a same a similar high so you can see this line right here and then it makes a higher low and then it should push up all the way to at least reach this high right so this will be my ultimate take profit target which is at this high right here so let me just uh draw a vertical ray right here so this will be my ultimate take profit target so let me just put it as my first resistance and same thing for first resistance actually i can take a fibonacci retracement so for retracement actually i can take a expansion right so i will take this retracement so uh this is my entry right so if a uh, prices breach here it will have reacted off at the 78.6 percent level so uh, let me just click on this retracement and then after that, I can open my negative 27.2% level, which is at our first resistance area. Next thing, I can take another Fibonacci retracement, and that is a projected retracement. So for a retracement, I can take from high all the way to low, right? Uh, I'm predicting that price will react at this level. So uh, this can be adjusted as well. But if I open up the 127.2% level, is right at our first resistance as well. And lastly, I can take a projected uh extension right so if i take a projected extension i can take one point two point and three points right at our projected area and then if i open up the 100 percent level you can see that once again it forms a very nice confluence with all these levels so let me just highlight this area out as our bearish area Okay, last but not least, uh, the most important of all is our stop loss. So for stop loss, definitely uh, right here, right, is uh, beyond the trend line. So in the case that our trend line does not work out and our idea is completely wrong that it does not bounce off this trend line or if we tested this trend line, then uh, it will be here, right? It will be outside of the structure. It will be outside of my FIPS. It will be uh, right here at our uh, swing low. So later I will adjust this swing low accordingly, right? So uh i wouldn't put exactly at this swing low i'll put slightly lower than the swing low all right so if i were to uh, open up another fit to uh, strengthen this it will be a fit from low to high so i can take a fibonacci retracement low to high and you can see the 127.2 percent level fits uh, right there and then i can finally take one last extension and same extension as just now so i'll just draw again because uh, clicking it is too complicated and if i open up the 127.2 forms another nice uh forms another nice confluence area here so i will expect that actually uh it will be nicer if i put below all the fips right so that in case it uh, reacts off here i can get out of the trade early not to make sure it can go back to my take profit right i'm not expecting the trade to uh, take profit after it broke through this trend line however in the case that it bounces a bit i can minimize my loss right so in trading it's not all about uh maximizing your gains it's also about minimizing your loss all right so this can be my second support all 
right? So this is my idea on uh, pound Aussie. And let me just draw the final arrow. So this is my idea on pound Aussie, definitely bullish as well. Uh, and combining with uh, the news, right? So if I were to give you a quick insight on the economic calendar, If we were to see, sorry, the, the economy kind of is loading. If you were to see today, right, Thursday, May 6, you can see a lot of pound news, right? Uh, monetary po policy report for pound, as well as uh, uh, basically a lot of monetary policy and banks, uh, uh, bank release uh, uh, results for the pound dollar, right? So you definitely will expect something that's more bullish. Why? Because every uh, government in the world right now is trying to cope with the coronavirus, which causes um, a, a, which causes a very loose monetary policy, which will cause a bullish pound dollar, right? So you can expect that the pound is very bullish. And as well as I expect that the Aussie will be very bearish, right? I've been looking through Aussie pairs and Aussie pairs are pretty bearish as well, all right? Without further ado, let's show. Uh, let me show you all to your third pair. So my third pair is Aussie Frank. All right, let me just open it up. All right, so we have our Aussie Frank. Let me open the monthly time frame. And on the monthly time frame, actually Aussie Frank, nothing much, right? You can see uh, mostly bearish, uh, broke out a bit, bullish. But here you can see the monthly candle, which uh, just opened is green. However, the previous month has been red, right? So actually monthly, not much information. I wouldn't say it's exactly bearish or bullish yet, right? So move down to a lower time frame, see the price action, right? So looking at the price action, uh, it might or might not have broken out of the trend line already. So I can draw this trend line as well, or I can draw uh, this trend line as well. As I said, it's very subjective. Uh, trend line methods are very subjective. However, I will prefer to say that it has already broken because uh, if I were to draw it like that, then uh, the trend line only touches two points, whilst if I draw it like that, uh, the trend line touches three points or four points, right? Um, so I will say that it has already broken the uptrend. And if even if you were to draw and close, uh, not much clue either. So if I were to draw and close, uh, you can see that it's actually right at the spot here. So I will be very, very careful as to trading Aussie Frank right now, right? So this is just an idea, not meant for you to uh, exactly take the trade, do your own research as well, all right? So, but this is just what I see on Aussie Frank, all right? So uh, let's take a look in the daily time frame, all right? So daily time frame actually looks very rosy for a short. You can see uh, the downtrend line has been broken, right? So if I were to draw a downtrend line, I mean, if I were to draw an uptrend line, the uptrend line has been broken, right? You can see uh, uptrend line broken okay, is coming back to retest, right? And if I were to draw another downtrend line, wow, you can see, oh, this is my shorting spot. Very, very nice. However, please don't be fooled because uh, if you look at the price action here, there's one thing that is very important and I do not want you all to miss out, which is why I'm cautioning you all against Aussie Frank uh, and is this a squeeze right here. So if I were to uh, actually not use a horizontal line, I will use a trend line, right? And then you can see that it's actually in a triangular squeeze. So right now, very hard to say, but uh, overall, like I said, Aussie still bearish. So I would still take a shot, but going with smaller position size. So once again, if you all want to go in into this trade, please make sure you all do your own uh, uh, investment research as well so that you all do not just follow me blindly, right? I'm just teaching you all how to fish as well as showing you all some of the ideas I have, all right? And it's not exactly recommending your trade ideas, all right? So uh, let's move on. Let's continue with this idea and move on to our hourly time frame. Uh, before that, I forgot. Uh, let me just mark that out in the daily time frame. I will want to short somewhere from here. So this will be a possible shorting target, all right? So this uh, is a target that I want to short at and uh, maybe at the take profit level will be somewhere around here, right? So uh, which is where price is at, so that in the case that uh, it does not, re it is still in a squeeze, right? It's still in a squeeze, I can get out at around this position. So let me just mark this position out so that this is very safe for our trading. And uh, I will just mark out a random uh, uh, stop loss area. So just in case uh, our trade goes wrong, we will get stopped out, but it is at a good level because this is our idea where you will react at this area once it does not. Uh, react at this area then uh, we will not get stopped out right so this is just a rough 
this is these are just rough levels so i will not go into the four hour to take a look at the uh real levels using fibonacci right i do not want to just give you a rough level and then tell you uh this one can shock okay so uh looking at the uh four hourly time frame now i can draw a better picture right so let me just take away all the trend line because it's cutting through too many candles and i would not accept that so let me just take away all this and then if i were to draw a trend line right uh i can now draw a descending trend line here and uh, let me just change it to red color all right so this is my descending trend line so this is a possible area to short as well and then if i really want to tag i can tag it to this horizontal swing high resistance right here you can see all these tops here i will put it above all these highs and i will short right here all right so first thing i can do find a fibonacci levels again right fibonacci always our favorite so once again i can take a fibonacci retracement so for retracement i can take from high to low and you can see that 127.2 percent level which is already open is already here all right next i can take a fibonacci extension so for extension once again three points one point two point and three point and if i open up the 78.6 percent level if i remember correctly uh sorry uh sorry 161.8 percent level uh i got a bit confused if i open up the 161.8 percent level you can see that there's a fibonacci confluence area all right next i can uh, take a fibonacci ex uh, extension right so i can take a fibonacci extension to find our stop loss level so for stop loss level one point two point and three points and if i open up the 78.6 percent level you can see that uh this level is right here and then same thing another 78.6 percent level that i can find is actually from a retracement so if i take a retracement and i open up the 78.6 percent level you can see that uh, this forms another confluence area so this can be my second resistance and this will be my first resistance And let me just highlight uh, both these areas out as my uh, bearish area. Oops. So finally, I can find my take profit target. So for take profit target, I can uh, once again take uh, three points. Uh, for extension and uh, retracement as well so first first point first for extension three points right here and you can see uh, actually if i open up the 61.8 let's see whether you'll be better uh, if i open the 61.8 um, nope the 78.6 will be nearer all right so i will take the 78.6 and finally if i uh, if i do a, a fibonacci retracement if i take a retracement from low to high and you can see that the 78.6 percent lines up nicely as well uh i got a question from daniel saying if when you take trade at marked area do you wait for confirmation candles or just put orders at those levels um i do uh, i do wait for confirmation candles but um i okay so what i what i will do is basically i will set the order there first in case i forget that i even had this order so what i'll do is i will put this order first and then i, I will continue to monitor the trade uh, just putting in the trade is not enough i will go and see whether uh is it still in a downtrend let's just say now uh, it is no longer uh, it has broke through the uh, uh, trend line right and i enter the trade then i will immediately uh i will immediately get out of the trade uh, while it, we test the trend line let's say uh the prices is here right uh, and i got in here and then prices came out and then came to back to retest and i will get out at the retest of the trend line right uh if not i will just put the trade order first before uh looking for confirmation candles because uh, uh i think it will be a bit too late when the confirmation uh, when the candles come out and then you start to put in your trade uh does that answer your question daniel vermeer um okay before waiting for his reply let's just continue so this can be our uh fibonacci confluence area again and this will be our bullish area no problem daniel all right so this will be our bullish area so definitely for uh for aussie frank it will be a shock for me and uh it will be at this level where the uh first resistance intersect with our descending trend line resistance all right so as as well as i said remember aussie definitely very very bearish looking at all pairs 
All right. If I look, at, if you look at Aussie dollar, Aussie pound, a uh, pound, pound Aussie, you can see the correlation, right? You have to uh, when you uh, take trades, you have to uh, take into account the correlation as well, so uh, that uh, you all understand uh, the relation and then do not trade. So, for example, if you are taking a long in pound Aussie, I will not go and long the Aussie franc, right? Because I'm long on the pound, short on the Aussie, but then I'm longing Aussie franc means there's something wrong, right? All right, so actually these three charts is all I want to show you all for today. Uh, you all can start uh, requesting for all the pairs that you all want to take a look. And like I said, I'm not as good as Isaac, so I'll try my best to help you all uh, do your analysis and give you all a view on all these charts, all right? All right, so Daniel want to take a look at uh, Euro USD. Okay, so for Euro USD, I think uh, I will be slightly. All right, let's take it step by step. Okay, so we will take a look at on the weekly time frame. On the weekly time frame, definitely bullish. All right, definitely bullish. However, what I'm scared about, what I'm scared about is this descending trend line right here. So if I were to change to close, if I were to change to close on weekly, you can see that it's actually right at uh, our descending trend line here, right? So Euro USD is actually a, a very mixed pair, but I will still go through nonetheless, all right? Um, I will just tell you some of my views, but personally for me, I will stay out, all right? But uh, these are the reasons why I will stay out, okay? So firstly, you can see that uh, there's an uptrend line right here. However, there's a downtrend line right here and it's right at the downtrend line and it's at a squeeze. All right, uh, Garrett Holler, the, uh, I'm using tradingview.com. All right, so this is the software I'm using. Okay, and then uh, this is on the weekly time frame. All right, so let's move on to the uh, daily time frame. So if I were to go to the daily time frame, you can see the downtrend more clear, uh, more closely. And then if you were to ask me, uh, Euro USD is actually more or less still in a squeeze, right? So if I were to take a, take a downtrend line right here, and if I were to take a a horizontal a horizontal ray right here you can see that uh, actually it is going into a squeeze right so this is part of the reason why i will not uh, do anything however um you can see uh, if you want to draw the downtrend line like that like this there's also a reason why right because it's touching three points and it has broken up so you can believe that it is bullish as well right but however you have to remember the weekly downtrend line that I drew and uh, you have to know that uh, it is either that uh, Euro USD have broken out or it is still reacting right so if I draw in close you can see that it is right at the area is still reacting however if I draw in candlesticks you can see that it has already broken out retest so definitely bullish right however uh, there's uh, there's so many ways to draw a trend line which makes this whole thing very subjective right so if you really really want me uh, if you put a gun to my head and say bullish or bearish I will say uh, bullish in the very, very short term, but I will not uh, take a position on it, right? So uh, if I were to draw an uptrend line, you can see that uh, the uptrend line is right here. So maybe I can take a position at this area here, right? So this is our horizontal pullback support, uh, and I can take a position starting here. Oh, why? Oh, sorry. I opened a horizontal line instead. Let me just open my horizontal ray. So this this can be an area where I can uh, put my buy position, right? Where the inter when the intersection of the uptrend line uh, versus uh, together with my horizontal swing low of uh, a horizontal pullback support right here. So let me just put this as my first support. All right. So uh, first thing first, I can find Fibonacci levels to strengthen this uh, strengthen this uh, level. So first thing I can do, I uh, find a Fibonacci retracement. All right. So for Fibonacci retracement, I can take this retracement right here. So uh, for this retracement, I can I can think about this entire move move up before pushing down, and you can see the seventy eight point six percent level is directly at our uh, first support area. All right, next we can take a Fibonacci extension. I can take a extension like this, but I'm not very sure whether the extension will have any fips at this area as well. And if I open up the fifty percent level, uh, you can see that it is relatively close. So this can be our Fibonacci confluence area for our first support area. Sorry, let me just shift this. And this will be my first support, right? So I can take a long from here. So definitely I can uh, put my take profit target here, but I will be more uh, conservative, right? Knowing that it is just reacting. So let me just move back to our weekly time frame. So this weekly time frame can be our uh, guidance on where we can long until, right? So I can draw a 
downtrend line via the close and then this can be our area where we can long until max right so we can go to our four hour chart and this can be our uh our longing target which is not a lot which and this is the reason why i do not think that a euro usd is a very good uh thing to long right now right so if i were to just continue with it i will just uh, put a uh, put a, a sell position here this is where i would take profit right because this is to be safe this is under our descending trend line resistance which is um on our weekly right because weekly is still very bullish uh so still very bearish right you can see the downtrend line right this is something that i do not like and uh if i were to continue let me just put a fibonacci extension to it so if i were to open up an extension and if i were to open up the 127.2 percent level you can see that the 127.2 percent level is right at our first resistance right here and this uh let me just adjust it a bit the mouse is not very good all right and this will be our bearish area so my take on it is definitely a bullish for the short term but this is already putting a gun to my head and lastly for stop loss i can put it outside of this uh i can put it out of this structure which is at uh below our ascending trend line resistance right uh, uh, ascending trend line support right here right so this can be uh somewhere i can put my stop loss i can actually take it at this horizontal swing low support right here all right and then if i were to take a uh if i were to take a retracement i can take a 1.127.2 percent level again so if I were to take a 127.2% level, or rather 161.8, I think would be better. Yep. And I can actually put it below our this FIP level so that uh, it fits nicer. And lastly, I can maybe take an extension, uh, one point, two points, and three points. And if I open up maybe the 61.8% uh, level or rather the 78.6% level, you can see that uh, it forms a nice, nice confluence area again. So let me just highlight this area. And um, this will be my setup on Euro USD, even though I do not think it is uh, very, very ideal. All right, uh, look at the take profit and stop loss uh, target. It is uh, very small. It is almost one to one ratio. And as well as I'm looking at our uh, weekly resistance line right here. So it is something that scares me and I would sit out of Euro USD and see what happens at this place. If it starts flying, then yes, definitely bullish. However, if it starts going down, then it is still abiding by the descending trend line resistance. All right, I got another request for CAT Yen. All right, so let's take a look at CAT Yen. So, okay, for CAT Yen, um, for Canadian dollar, I'm uh, roughly very, very... Um, bullish right for canadian dollar i'm roughly uh, very bullish i've been looking at charts and it has been looking uh, quite bullish right so canadian uh cat yen uh, on the weekly time frame uh, already broken out of the downtrend line definitely so uh, if i were to draw a downtrend line you can see a, a nice breakout retest before pushing up further right and if i were to draw a uptrend line uh maybe in close is that is it possible to draw in close all right, um, I will guess this is not a very good trend line because it's too far away from the price right now. So I will probably draw in candles, all right? So if I draw in candles, uh, definitely still bullish right here. However, we might see a pullback to make a, a higher low, right? We are seeing the price action here, higher lows, higher highs, all right? So now it has made a higher high, we might see a pullback to make a higher low before pushing up further, all right? So this is the uh, price action for CAT Yen. All right, so uh, we take a look at our daily time frame. So for daily time frame, uh, still bullish as well. It has actually just come out of the squeeze right here, and then it has pushed up higher, right? It has pushed beyond this level of support right here, and uh, it might come back to test before pushing up further. Uh, I do not know, but this definitely can be one of our entry targets. So let me just leave it there for now. And if I were to draw an uptrend line, I do not know whether it's nice. It's not very nice. Maybe I can adjust it a bit. Um, now it's only touching three points. Maybe this can be our entry because uh, our ascending trend line support is intersecting with our horizontal uh, 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 horizontal swing low uh, swing low support. All right. So uh, for KYN definitely bullish. So now let me move on to our uh, hourly time frame. So for hourly time frame, uh, maybe I can adjust this trend line once again. So you can see that I can adjust my trend line as I go because I do not have to stick to one because the 
prices is just uh, going too high up and is too far away from my trend line. So I want to keep adjusting my trend line as I go, right? So uh, definitely uh, this will be a bit too far a target to pull back, right? So maybe uh, I can put it somewhere nearer at this area, all right? So this can be one of my and and uh, this can be one of my entrance as well, right? So this can be my first support. Let me just take it as my first support and uh, I can take a Fibonacci retracement definitely. So I can take a retracement from low to high and maybe the 61.8 or maybe the 50% level will do. Yep, 50% uh, level will do. And uh, I can take a re uh, extension as well. So if I take an extension from high to low to high, uh, let me just, sorry, let me just change that a bit. And uh, maybe the 61.8% level will do it good. Yep, and you can see that there's a nice confluence area right here. So this can be my uh, entrance. Uh, next, for stop loss, once again, I'll put it outside of this structure, out of this ascending trend line support below this swing low resistance, right? So I'll just take it at this swing low resistance first, and then I will continue to see the price action after that. So first thing I can do, I'll take a Fibonacci retracement. So I'll take a retracement of this last move. So you can see in close, if I change it to close, actually this is one entire movement. So I can take a retracement from this swing low to this high right here. And if I were to open up a 60, uh, 61.8% level, you can see that it is directly above our, my second support. So once again, I'll put it directly slightly below our uh, uh slightly below our 61.8 as well as this swing low week right here to uh as this this might be the liquidity zone that many many uh big players are looking out for and this can be my second support level and once again i can take another retracement right so i i can take the exact same retracement just that i can open up maybe the uh 100 level or the 127.2 percent level in this case 122 percent level is better so i'll put it below all these fips right i'll let me just take away the magnet. Uh, I will just put below all these fibs and this can be another bullish area. So this is uh, something that I would do. All right, lastly, uh, for uh, as for uh, our profit target, uh, because there's no horizontal swing highs, there's no graphical level. So once again, I can do my Fibonacci uh, extension, uh, expansion, right? So for this level, when you, when you come back to react at the 50% level, maybe I can open up the, uh, Maybe I can open up the negative 27.2% level. So if I were to open up the negative 27.2 level, this looks like a good level. As well as I can open up my second take profit level, which can be my negative 61.8. So let me just change it to negative 61.8. Uh, let me just add it in. And this can be my second take profit level. So I have two right here. And then same thing, I can take a Fibonacci extension from this move right here, from low to high to low. And if I were to take an extension, one point, two point, and three points. And if I were to open up, uh, you can see the 127.2% is really there. So maybe I just open up the 100% level and it lines up perfectly with our negative 27% level. So these two can be my first resistance and second resistance respectively. All right, so this is my view on CAT Yen. Definitely bullish, but uh, be careful as well because uh, you never know when it might break through the trend line. It has already touched one time, two time, three time. Uh, maybe the fourth touch, it will break through the trend line. Uh, no one will know how the market will go, so set your stop loss and use proper risk management strategies. All right, so uh, one more request on USD CAT. Right, like I said, USD CAT, uh, like I said, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, like I said, USD uh, is bullish, CAT is bullish as well. It's just which one is more bullish. However, uh, USD CAT, I would say that uh, very, very bearish, right? USD CAT, very, very, very bearish. Um, uh, you can see actually um, that it has already broke through this. Uh, before that, it was in a squeeze, right? Oh, wait, sorry. I was on the four hour time frame. Let's just start from the beginning. Let's just start from the bigger time frame all right so uh you can see it's one straight line down a very very bearish on usd cat so uh definitely bearish right nothing much to say right here uh if you want to draw a counter trend line if you want to draw a, a increase uh increasing trend line resistance no matter what it has broken the trend line already right if i were to draw in close i think it would be better you can see the re breakout and retest uh better uh i think this is not very nice because it cut through the uh, cut through the candle bodies right this trend line so i will not draw but overall confirm very very bearish and if you were to ask me for a take profit target um uh, there's really no take profit target because if you zoom out the next take profit target is here and it's on the weekly time frame so it's really 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 far away so 
um, if I were to change it to line graph, uh, it is almost at the previous uh, swing low at uh, 2017, right? So definitely very, very bearish, still got room to uh, fall more, right? So maybe we can uh, find a short position, right? So if we were to go to the daily time frame, the daily time frame um, does be able does allow us to be able to draw a uh a downtrend line right so there's a downtrend line here however um now is uh, you can see the price action as well right uh lower highs let me just change it to black again i don't know why it's always white right you can see lower highs lower highs lower highs lower low lower low lower low lower low right so make lower high before pushing down to a lower low so this is the structure price action for uh, USD cap right now so definitely very very bearish once again need to repeat <laughs> very very bearish so uh, perhaps we can take a position here but since it's on the daily time frame this might be a bit too far a target for us to reach so maybe we can go down to a lower time frame chart to look at another entry level right so if I were to change the four hour chart you can see that actually the price and the uh, downtrend line is too far right so i will go down uh, i will expand and find a uh, entry near our price level right so i'll just take this actually i will not take this away i'll just uh, take into account this uh, trend line and that uh, it might actually uh, pull back all the way to our trend line and make the lower high right so this is possible but i will think that it is going to push down further Right, so I can actually draw a downtrend line. So a downtrend line is actually not very useful in this case. So maybe I wouldn't use this downtrend line as well. So uh, you can see here, you can see here that uh, before that I was saying that it has already broken out of the squeeze. So maybe this can be our possible entry level again because uh, this area, this area can be, uh, 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 this area haven't hasn't been retested yet. So it has broken out of this uh, liquidity zone and it is possible to come back and retest this area right so i can just put my uh, uh put my entry at this level so once again uh, i when i take retracements or extensions i will always take the end of the move but obviously this is not the end it will continue to fall or maybe it will just reverse who knows but whatever it is i shouldn't be taking a retracement at this uh, price action right here but in this case i really have no choice but to take a retracement uh this way because um, that the price action is just not giving me chance to uh, uh to write a, to to draw a fit right that for a movement that has ended right so all I can do is take a fit uh here and all I can do is uh maybe open up the uh fifty percent level so this can be my entrance so once again uh take extension so once again this is not a good people drawing lesson because um I'm not supposed to take uh, a Fibonacci retracements or extensions on uh on actions on prices that are not done however uh, i have no choice right so you can see i already opened the 61.8 percent extension as well as a 50 percent retracement so this can be a possible uh possible entry target where you can see that is near our liquidity zone where he has broken out of this zone so he might come back to retest this zone before pushing down further right so this can be my first resistance so sorry first resistance and uh, next for our stop loss for our stop loss right so this is a bit tricky so uh, as for stop loss I feel that um, if you put if you put it right here it will be a bit risky as well because um, it might just make a double top right so you can see prices now are making like this structure here let me just change this to black again uh, it's like making this structure here it might make a double top before pushing down further right so it, it might be the same height it might not so uh, to be safe to be safe i'll put it uh, slightly higher right so maybe i can put it uh, at around this level right here which is slightly higher and once again uh, this is not a good people drawing lesson i just want to repeat and repeat because um, i have no other fibs that i can draw right so maybe i can take this level and open up the 127.2 percent level and maybe i can just put my fib above it right? i can just put my uh, stop loss above it right and then for my retracement for my retracement if i'm not around the 161.8 it's a bit far but uh, i will just take it as well and uh, this will be my second bearish area so once again i have no levels maybe this can be a level right maybe the horizontal pullback support uh, or rather pullback resistance right this can be our level so maybe i'll put it slightly higher a bit uh, right here right and then uh, i will highlight this area as my second bearish area so once again i apologize for drawing bad fibs do not learn from this fib because uh, this is bad fibs drawn as 
I really do not have any choice uh, for to draw FIPS on USD CAD, right? Because the descent is too fast and I actually find no good entry as well, even though I think that it is going to be continue bearish. All right, so final take profit target. Once again, take profit target, I can do an expansion of this move, right? So we are just expecting a push up from here so that our move will be completed. However, I strongly believe that it might still push down further. So it might not even reverse to our liquidity zone. However, let's just continue. So um, let me just open up the negative 27.2% level. Uh, and this can be one of my take profit target. And secondly, I can open up another 61.8 level. So these two can be my take profit target one and take profit two. All right. So these two can be my take profit targets. Uh, first support. And this will be my second support. So, um, I cannot really find any extensions. So I think this uh, is the only levels that I can find. And um, maybe the next level is really a graphical level in 2017. All right. So something like that, but I wouldn't go so far as to say that you reach the take profit level of uh, 2017. But from what I see, really, really very bearish, uh, not much reverse signal as well. All right. So that's all I see for the USD cap. All right, so um, I do not see anyone requesting anymore. So I assume that um, no one is wanting to see anymore. Uh, chart request. All right, so once again, once again, uh, let me apologize. Okay, for uh, for Chetan Chida, one last uh, on pound yen, right? On pound yen. So, okay, for pound yen, uh, a quick one, a quick one. Uh, USD friend, you can, okay. Um, Okay, I'll give a quick one for both. I'll give a quick one for both. Maybe not a uh, 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 not a uh, entry or stop loss level. I'll just give a uh, bullish or bearish buyers, right? So uh, pound yen uh, for pound news. Uh, pound is coming out a lot tonight. Remember the previous one I said. So pound yen. Uh, my view is definitely bullish for the short term, right? Today definitely bullish because of the monetary policy news. Uh, later on in in the evening at about uh, 7 p.m. Right, so definitely bullish weekly. Uh, quite bullish. I will not draw a trend line because the ascent is too steep. Once again, I do not think a trend line will be necessary. Right. So we go down to the daily time frame, and you can see actually pound yen is actually on a squeeze. Right. You can see a squeeze happening in pound yen. However, I believe that it has already broke out of the squeeze and uh coming back to retest a bit like our pound Aussie. Right. So once again, move moving on to our four hour chart. Four hour chart. Once again, uh, not much traps here except for here. Uh, be careful about here right so here is actually uh starting to look like a little bit of a squeeze so uh, be careful of this as well right so look out for this squeeze as well as um look out for uh, uh look out for this area where uh, the trend the descending trend line intersects with the ascending trend line if not i can even draw the trend line in this way and uh it can be still bullish right so uh just bear in mind pound definitely uh bullish all right uh Ver veronica usd frank all right very fast on usd frank before i end this webinar all right how many times do you do this webinar oh uh, we actually do this webinar every week uh, so on thursday uh, just make sure to sign up on the fp market uh, uh on the fp market uh, uh main page right and then uh usually it's not me usually it's isaac who is uh i agree to be much much more qualified because he has the cmt and cfte's um uh holding right so i believe that i definitely not as qualified him and he can analyze the charts and give you more sense than what i can right however I, i'm trying my best and uh, i hope that uh, i have uh, filled his shoes properly however he'll be back next week not to worry um you have a site where we can follow you uh not really sorry daniel Vermeer. okay but anyway uh usd frank uh definitely bearish right definitely bearish of usd frame so if i were to do a downtrend line you can see on the weekly time frame definitely bearish right it has just reacted off this downtrend and in fact yesterday i was just here and uh it has already reacted off uh, the downtrend line very very nicely all right so this is definitely on the weekly next on the daily uh definitely broken up the uh, broken the uptrend line right so if i were to draw uptrend line definitely broken came back to retest before pushing down so definitely more room to be bearish right so uh, i wouldn't i cannot really draw a 
uh, trend line here. However, I believe there might be a squeeze going on, but I cannot be sure. So to be sure, let me move on to a lower time frame chart, which is our four hour time frame. So for our four hour time frame, um, we can see that uh, yes, it's actually going through a squeeze, right? Um, I would say that uh, technically now. Uh, this will be the high and this will be the low, right? So it's actually in this zone right here. So um, uh, if you were to ask me, I would stay out of USD franc because uh, right now it's in a squeeze. However, if I were to draw a downtrend line, it might have even broken the downtrend line, right? Okay, I do not have a very nice downtrend line as well. So um, actually, I will just stay out of USD franc because it looks like it is in a squeeze as well, right? And um, but long term, long term, definitely bearish. If you are looking at a long term uh, investment sort of approach, uh, a dollar franc definitely bearish. However, uh, for short term swing trading or maybe even scalping, um, uh, hard to tell because uh, right now it's entering into a squeeze. Right. So this is just my view on dollar franc. Okay. Um, thank you to everyone once again. Thank you, Naga, uh, Nagamani. Thank you, Ver Veronica. Thank you, Gareth. All right. So actually, I have come to the end of uh, my a webinar hopefully uh hopefully uh thanks again daniel so hopefully uh you all uh, can look at on my trade setups but do not please do not uh, trade based on what i uh, gave you is because um you all have to do your own research as well i'm just teaching you how to draw the fips how to uh, analyze from a top-down approach i'm not trying to give you all investment advice right but these are just some of the trade uh the previous three uh, a graph that I show you are some of the nice trade ideas that I found, right? However, please do not trade uh, just blindly following off my ideas, right? So once again, thanks to all, thanks for spending your time uh, of, uh, on this uh, webinar with me. I assure you, Isaac will be com coming back next week. He will give you a uh, much better presentation than I did, uh, I think for sure. And uh, stay safe everyone, trade safe, and have a nice week ahead. Thank you so much.